Okay, so hello. I um, made this teddy bear and I decided to use Photoshop 3D to texture it. So this is the mesh. This is the actual bear and I can cam around and you can see him. And uh, to do it, a texturing job here in Photoshop really is easy. Uh, the thing that you have to um, know when you first start this is that some of these effects don't matter to your texture. So what you see here, this lighting, these dots and these lines, these are what's called an image-based light. That means that based on an image that uh, Photoshop uses by default, that's where specular lighting is coming through. Now this would mean something if you're making out a render inside of Photoshop if you're creating a scene to take a picture of. But we don't want to do that. We're just creating the texture for the bear. So we don't need any of this. And uh, you can actually change this if you wanted to, but let me show you how to get rid of it. Here inside the 3D panel, there's a uh, layer here called Environment, and we just click on that. And here you can see the lighting-based um, texture even more so. But up here in the environment and the properties, you see IBL, which is image-based lighting. We can turn that off, or we can come in here and we can actually <clears throat> remove that texture. You'll see that you can also replace it and stuff, so you can just turn it off. It doesn't matter which way you do it. Again, this is not going to affect your texture on or off. But with it off, you don't have those lines interrupting your view. The next thing that you can see is that the front of it has light shining on it, and the back doesn't. The sides don't either. And here in the top view of this secondary viewport, um, this is a top view. You can see that here as well, that the front has light and the back doesn't. By default, Photoshop puts one light in the scene, and actually you can close this. You don't have to have this open, and you can open it up at another time if you want. Uh, to me, this really uh, doesn't play much of a part of anything that I do, so I'll just close that up. The next thing that we do is in the 3D, if we turn on this infinite light here, click on it, you can see the light source. And if I cam around, you can see where the light source is. Oh, let me, let me turn this around a little bit. And let me click on infinite light. And you see that like, this is like pointing at the sun. And that's up here of the light source. So the light comes down and shines and casts the shadow. These shadows mean absolutely nothing, once again, to creating the texture. The only reason that I like to even mess around with these or put any more in it is to um, make my bear light to see. So let me cam around on him here. And you have to click on current view to do that. So I'll go from the side view. And I will turn on my infinite light. And then I will adjust it so that it is looking straight on. And it does take a little bit to get used to pulling on these and working with them, but we're just gonna do a couple and have this kind of set. Again, this doesn't affect the texture at all. So down here where it says infinite uh, light, uh, that's the first one. And this light bulb, we click on it and we can add a new one. Okay, now this new one is pointing directly at us. So let's go ahead and turn our current view so we can see. And you can see, let me, let me, let me zoom out a little bit here. Oops, let me get my current view. Okay, so from the front, if I turn on the second infinite light, you can see that it's coming directly from over here, right? So that's good. I'm going to add another infinite light. 
And this one, I'm going to point the other way and directly across. I'm going to turn my view around and look at it from the side again. And now I'm going to add a fourth light. And this one I'm going to make sh come from the back. So it's shining on his back. There. And now I have my lights in there. Now when I cam around my little bear, do you see that I've got um, light on all sides? So I can kind of see. If I were going to um, do this, uh, I could do a little bit more if I wanted to, but I'll just leave it like this. But you can also put lights in there so you get rid of all the um, dark spots, the shadows around the body. But like I said, this doesn't matter as far as our texture goes. So we'll just leave it like this for now. On this bear, I've also created one material for the eyes and one for the rest of the bear. The reason that the eyes have a separate material is so that I can add a little bit of shine to them inside of Second Life because they're going to be black and they should shine a little bit. The nose, I don't really want to have any shine to it, so it is part of the regular bear material. Uh, so now in the 3D tab, down here, by default, you'll see two materials put in here. And these are actually the materials that I put on here inside of Blender. They come in with it. So if I click on the first one, I'm not going to worry about the second one, but clicking on the first one, the first thing that I want to do is come up here into the properties. And the diffuse, I want to set the diffuse to white. So I'll click on this. And I'll change this to white and click OK. The other thing that I like to do is I like to come into specular and I like to turn my specular black and click OK. Now, you'll see that this is kind of bright to be looking at. Um, and the reason for that is the intensity of the lights. So you can also, if that's too bright to work with, come to each of the infinite lights. And I found that 35% for the intensity is pretty good on all of them. So I can just come in here and just quickly change all of these to 35. Okay, so this now gives me pretty, a pretty good um, base to start working with. So I'm going to come back up to the first material that I have. And I'm going to go to the um, diffuse. And you'll see that I have a picture of an, um, an icon of an image here. That means there's a texture associated with it. If there was just a folder here, you would see absolutely no, uh, you would see, um, if there was no texture here, you would see a folder icon instead. So click on this, and you can choose Edit Texture. And that brings up a window. And you can see here I have my layout for the teddy bear. Uh, so I may not know what all of these parts are right away. Most of them don't really matter. But these two in the middle, these are the ropes uh, for the bear's eyes, uh, for the buttons that go through. And I'm just going to have those a color, so I don't really need to worry about those being too big or anything like that. Um, and let's go ahead and turn my my zoom off. So I'll just click another tool here. Control zero places it centered for me. So now I want a texture here of fur. Um, I did put together a little uh, thing here of all kinds of textures. And the first one that I brought in was just a pink uh, fur. And let's see if I can get I have to turn the other ones off for now. Um, I'll kind of show you what I did, and it's really easy. So I took this pink fur that I found, and I went to Image and Adjustments, and I changed it to black and white, and I went OK on that. And after getting that black and white, you can actually go to Image again, Adjustments, 
and go to levels. And in this levels, you can adjust it by bringing the white tones up, the highlights up to make it whiter. You can bring the mid tones down, and you can even bring the black, uh, which is the shadows, making that even darker. So you can really play around with um, the colors here a lot to get the white that you want. So I'm just going to click cancel on that because I've already got that done. Uh, so what I came up with after turning it white was this one. Uh, I like to have a few darks in there uh, so that um, they add that depth and that shape of the fur. And plus they'll hold color a little darker than the white spots will when we give an overlay to this if we do. The problem with this one is it is not seamless. So you have to go to filter. Oh, let me click on this. Go to filter. And it is not, oh, there we go. I didn't have the layer selected. Filter and other and offset. And you can see by default, it just moves it to the positive 256 and vertical positive 256. So you see that it was moved over in both directions. And now what we can do is we can make this seamless. And let me just show you a little bit about doing that. So I picked the clone tool. And the clone tool is great because when you pick a sample spot, so let's say this is going to be my sample spot, and I hit Alt and then left mouse click. That's now what I have on the brush. But it has such a nice feathered edge to it. I don't know if you can see that, but on the outer area of the circle, on the inside, it's kind of... You can see through it, uh, and so what this does is it helps to blend in the back with the foreground. And so now I can just click a few of these and put them where I want them. And I like to constantly change my um, point of reference. And point of reference, I guess, is where you get the uh, fill and texture from. So I like to change that so I don't have like some weird pattern going on. And uh, sometimes you can go exactly uh, with the grain. You can go against the grain. And I didn't care for that one area too much. So I would just maybe go over it a little bit. And I can pick different areas so I can stay consistent with the fact that the fur is... Uh, going in all different directions. Okay, so I won't finish doing that now, but I will show you the one that I did finish, and that is this one. And you really cannot see um, where I added um, new information to. And just to check the seamlessness of it, go to Filters, and Other, and Offset again, and it will offset it for you, and I see no seams, so that's really good. And you can do that as much as you want to keep checking the offset of it. And you can see just no seams in there anywhere. Okay, so that's doing good. Now, next what I want to do is with this layer showing, go to Edit or Select All, Edit, and Copy. And I'm going to go to the material for my teddy bear. And now I will go to Edit and Paste. So here it is. Now, the problem with this is, is if I put it on the teddy bear, it's really stretched out and the fur looks really long. and It doesn't look very good. And actually, I'll show you how that looks. So let me put this here. And let's put it on the front of the bear. So this is the front of the bear down here. And I'm going to just go ahead and close this now. When you close it, it's going to ask if you want to save it, choose yes, and then you'll see that it gets applied to the bear. So you see how that texture is like all stretched out and actually kind of icky looking. It doesn't look very nice, and we can turn our bear around, and we can see that it may be seamless, but it doesn't really have uh, the look and feel that I want it to have. So I will go back into... Um, the 3D window, choose that material slot again, and go to the texture and edit it. And what I'm going to do 
is use control T to transform this layer. And for the percentages, I'm going to take down to um, 25% on both the width and the height. So, and then I can take this and move it. Um, I can then use control J to copy it and snap it into place. And I can do this um, all the way across. So control J and one more time. Now what's really nice is I can take all of those layers. So I have all of them here selected. And I can duplicate them all at once and move them down. And I can use Control J to copy them again. Whoops, I don't know what I pushed there. Okay, so Control J. And you can just keep doing this and kind of stamps it in. So now the whole bear has the fur texture on it. And um, of course my eyes are not what I want to have textured the strings. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here and choose Merge Visible. So all of my things here are now one layer. I'll create, um, I won't create a new layer. I'll just go on to this one and I will zoom in on the string area. I can get my paintbrush and choose a color for the rope and just color that in. I think that's like a good string or a rope color. And I could actually probably do red because I'm going to give this some uh, red velour and some red satin on the actual bear. Um, so now let me go ahead and close this and of course yes to save it. And now you can see on the bear, let me click on this, and let me zoom in on it, whoops, let me rotate them first, and now we can zoom in a little bit, and he's looking pretty good, <laughs> yeah, it's a little more, uh, like the fur that I would like to have on him. Of course I could make it a little bit tighter in some areas so the fur doesn't look as long as uh, it does. I could work on the paw here a little bit on the arm. You can see that that's a little stretched out. So that's okay though. I can still work on that if I want to. Um, I do want to do something different though to the actual uh, bottom of the feet. Those are where I'm going to put red velour uh, for his paws. And I'm going to put a red satin on the inside of his ears. So, back to the 3D layer material. And edit the texture. Now I know that um, these are his paws uh, on the feet and the hands. So I'll go back to my first image and find the uh, red velour texture. And I can just do an, uh, a marquee selection here around Oops. Just around that there. Doesn't have to be perfect because this doesn't have to be seamless. So edit, copy, back here, edit, and paste. There it is. And I can move this up here. Uh, transform it a little just to scale it down so I can get more of that velour detail in there. And let me zoom in, apply this, let me zoom in a little. 
And I think that that looks pretty good. Okay, so move this over a little. This layer, I'm going to duplicate it and move it here. Oops, it did not duplicate for me. There we go. And duplicate it again. And as you can see, I probably would make this a little bit bigger. So transform it and stretch it out a little. And duplicate it and pull it down to this one. Alright, so let me go ahead and close this up. Yes, I want to save it. Back to the bear. And let me go ahead and cam my... Whoops, I'm not getting him to, there we go, and now you can see that I've got velour right there on his little paws and stuff, he's so cute. Um, next I would do satin for the inside of the ears, and that's just as easy as doing uh, the paws, except you will have to take your time a little bit with this one, so... Let me go ahead and uh, turn on the satin layer, and I will make a new marquee selection. Whoops. Oh, and come on. I'm using the move tool instead of the marquee select. It's always a good thing to check your tool to make sure that you actually click the right one. Edit and copy. Edit and paste. So now I know that um, one side of the ear is different than the other. You can see these are a little rounder. These are a little more of a hill shape here. But how do you know which one is which? Well, you can very easily just choose your paintbrush tool. And you can just paint on one like that, right? Um... If you come here, do you see here that this one's painted in? Is that painted in? Let me just make sure. Yep, it's painted in. The lights are pretty bad. And plus, I'm looking at this from um, my screen. It has the sun shining on it. Okay. So I know that these are the front right here. So I'm going to go ahead on this layer. And I'm going to get my eraser tool, and I'll just erase that. I don't want that there. I'm going to take this layer here, and I ended up erasing a little bit of that, which I really didn't want to do, so let me erase this a little better without erasing that corner. Okay, and now I'm going to take um, my rectangle select and make an elliptical one and what I'm going to do is just create a rectangle about that or this, on that lips about that size okay so that's the size that I want it and I'm going to move it here onto my satin and I'm going to go to select and um, inverse the selection and then edit and cut. And it should cut that off. And why didn't it? You can also use Control X. I don't know why that didn't work though, but it should have. Um, now this is okay, um, but if you uh, zoom in here, you see you don't have a whole lot of detail there like we had before. So let's go back and you can see, you know, you have all these nice satin lines and variations of color and stuff. So you really do want to get that in there. So the best thing to do is to not have that marquee selection. And so go to select and deselect. And we're going to use our transform again because this is just a great tool. And let's scale it down a little and enter to accept the changes. And if we 
zoom out and then zoom in here. We can take this um, layer, we can move it here, and I'm going to transform it some more because I really do want to get that texture variation and those colors in there so you can really tell that it's a satin and that it's not, you know, um, just red smeared uh, texture. So I think right around there is good. And I'm going to copy this and move the copy straight down. Oops. Let me just bring that back down again because I went, I went all crooked on it. Alright, now I will close this image save it and on my teddy bear now you can see that I've got the red satin on the front of the ears I've got the red paws and so now this bear is ready to bring into Second Life and I will uh, go ahead and uh, show you that in a second oh one other thing huh I forgot I want to actually um I want to color the fur, so let me go back to diffuse and edit the texture, and I want this fur to be colored, I don't want it to be this white, I made it white only so that it would accept colors nicely, so over the fur layer, which is the bottom one, I'll create a new layer, and I'm going to fill in that with a color. And I'm going to start with the brown that I used for the um, string, except I'm going to bring the brightness down a little bit. So there we have that. And saturation, maybe I'll lift up the saturation just a little bit. And then on this layer, bucket fill it. Uh, it's not quite chocolatey enough, so let me take the saturation way up here and that's getting a little better so let me just keep adjusting the saturation and the brightness until I get the brown that I want and then on this layer change the mode you can do a lot of them you can do overlay which just highlights the dark parts I find that I think multiply will usually work nice so there's multiply and you can see the fur let's test it out real quick then you know and again remember that the bear doesn't show the exact texture that we're going to get because of the lighting system but it's pretty it's pretty good for seeing um and let's see if we can push them back a little bit It's really hard to see, but overall, I think that's pretty much what I want. Okay, so I'm just going to go to this texture again. So, material and edit texture. And then I can save this texture, so just file, uh, file and just save as a, a JPEG is what I did. Alright, so let me get into Second Life and then show you. Okay, so there he is inside a Second Life. And you can see that I've got a nice satiny feel here because I captured some of the, the wrinkles and the shading and everything. Um, I did get his nose on that material. I didn't mean to, but that's not so bad anyways. Uh, you can see that the strings are colored dark. Um, and that is because when I did the overlay... On the texture here, I didn't um, remove that from right here, so I could even come in here and 
do this and erase on this layer. Let me zoom. Let me zoom in a little bit. Well, actually, if I just make my brush a little smaller. There. Now my ropes will be uh, the strings where his eyes will actually be that color there. And I did too much of it because I got some of the arm undone. So there we go. And then that will have my eyes, uh, the strings here, the right color. Anyways, have fun with it.